Deidre Hawkins, Commander's Log, 214 AM, March 1st, 2015. The XCOM project is underway. I have a fine, hand-picked group of soldiers waiting in the barracks for their chance to go out and kick some alien ass. I myself am just settling into the XCOM facility. There's a lot that we need to do. Building, restructuring, digging. I will say that this project is... Well, I don't want to say that I may have begged to bite off more than I can chew, but... That may just be the case. Since the XCOM project is, uh, shall we say, under wraps, the soldiers that I had to hand pick from, many were flawed. Many wanted to revenge a fallen family member or friend. Many just wanted to avenge their own anger and upset at their failed lives. But I am determined to bring these soldiers into peak performance. Well, tonight we have uh, some barracks work to do. I've taken the time to assign some soldiers some new ranks. The rookies are ready to go out into the field. And I am ready, or at least as ready as I am ever going to be, to lead. That's all for now. This shall be in my first log. Commander Deidre Hawkins. Hawk. Out. We are here at the base of XCOM and you just heard Commander Deidre Hawkins first log. Every episode will start out with her log. And as you can tell from her voice, <laughs> Commander Deidre Hawkins is, um, is incredibly American. Now, in the first episode, you guys have heard me say that Commander Deidre Hawkins was uh, her home continent. I said country on accident, but her continent was uh, Africa. And that's true. Um, Deidre's backstory, quick backstory, is that she was raised by missionaries uh, who moved her to Nigeria. Let's go over and take a look. Actually, let's go to Mission Control right there. And moved her to Nigeria. So, um, she is, uh, but she is, was raised by some, uh, good old-fashioned Southern Baptists, hence her accent. And, uh, she hit, moved back when she was, uh, at the age of 11. Her parents sent her back to the United States for what her mother called her education and finishing school. And what that basically meant was to get <laughs> Miss Hawkins ready for what every uh, woman in the Hawkins family had done for generations, and that is get married. <laughs> get married, find a good man, um, preferably someone who was re you know, deeply religious and believed in the love of God, <laughs> and settle down and make more baby Hawkins. Well, as you can tell, Deidre's path did not end up quite in that way. We'll find out more about her story as we go along with this game. But for now, I'm going to take you over to the barracks. Let's look at these soldiers. We have 12 soldiers here. Initial pack of eager XCOM recruits from very different circumstances. Let's introduce you to some of them. This is Squatty Sniper, Brian Godemon. Let me just pull out my little piece of paper here that has all of your backstories. And I was really impressed with the backstories that came in. First of all, they were all, many of them, I should say, very detailed and gave me quite the chuckle numerous times. Um, and even though I made it clear that you guys didn't have to put a backstory in, everybody did. Even if it was just one or two lines, everybody put a backstory in. I was really impressed by that. 
Um, I have five pages of recruits here. That's a lot of recruits. See, a lot of people filled out for a soldier and many of you guys got one. And for those of you who didn't, don't worry. More XCOM soldiers will be coming in. And let me tell you about what I mean with this. You can hire soldiers. The barracks has a capacity of um, 70 and we only have 13 soldiers, it says here. I don't know why it says 12 over there and 13 over here. But in any case, we don't even have half the amount of room that is filled up. We could buy a lot more soldiers and we will either be hiring them or some soldiers may not make it. <laughs> so um, those who uh, don't make it will have to be replaced by fresh recruits every now and then as we have a little bit of money I'll bring in fresh recruits and do as much as I can to get all of you time on the battlefield. Also I have made some changes to my options. In the second wave uh, settings I ended up starting a new game because I realized that I would like to have damage roulette turned off. It'll be, um, there's such a wide range of damage uh, in the damage roulette that though it does add a lot of um, mystery and challenge to the field and, and, and uncertainty to the field, um, it also adds so much uncertainty that it may be difficult for me to figure out how much damage each weapon's gonna do and learn from that. Everything else is the same. So, um, and also I have, uh, let's see here, under options, gameplay, nope, this is not where I want it. Difficulty, ah, so I am now on normal difficulty and as I get a feel for XCOM, I'll be going up to classic. And then if I'm absolutely insane, I might go up to impossible, but I, I don't know if I could do that to be absolutely honest, but we're gonna try. Also, for those of you new to XCOM, there's a database over here lot of different information in here that you can if you are barracks, you have the option of hiring additional soldiers to bolster your squads by selecting hire soldiers you will be presented with a basic display indicating the total cost of the requested soldiers as well as the remaining troop capacity of the barracks yeah basically what i just told you so um yeah so there's all this information down here and if you're the reading type and when you play a game and i am i do go through and read stuff like for example this is pretty funny dr shen Dr. Raymond Shen is the chief engineer of the XCOM project. Dr. Shen has proven to be an invaluable asset with his decades of experience. The XCOM project is lucky to have such a brilliant, dedicated, world-renowned, award-winning engineer at its disposal. Please note, this artificial intelligence was created by Dr. Shen. <laughs> so Dr. Shen is also modest. <laughs> Um, one more. Let's do Dr. Valen. Dr. Valen is the chief scientist assigned to the XCOM project. She leads the research team's efforts to discover a means to adapt the alien technology in order to advance human scientific developments. Okay, so he didn't give her nearly as much due as he gave himself. But um, there's information here, which if I find the need maybe to go in here and show you something, I will. So let's return to the game. I was going to show you the soldiers that we have here. Let's go back and view these soldiers. This is Brian Godemon. Let me find him on my list. Here he is. So I'll give you uh, Brian's backstory. Brian was innocent. That is all he knows. When he was just 15 years old, he witnessed a brutal murder and was subsequently Im implicated for doing the deed. Um, I'm skipping forward on some of this so we don't spend all day reading bios, but um, now it is 10 years later and the XCOM team is desperately looking for recruits. And because armed forces in the world are stretched thin, the XCOM team has randomly taken prisoners from across the world. I thought that was fascinating. So Brian is a um, prisoner, basically, given a chance to rehab himself and prove himself to, the, to, uh, to his country and uh, make amends. Well, he didn't do anything wrong. He was wrongly accused, but at least try and get his name cleared. Um, now, um, oh, and actually, it looks here that he is saying Biron, Biron, not Brian. Um, this is submitted by Open World Addict. Tell me if you want it to be Biron or Brian. I'm not sure if that's a mistake in, um, or if that's how the word name is actually spelled. Uh, now, uh, Biron or Brian wants to stay alive and attempts to prove he is not a bad man. So that's Biron. This is Assault Charlie Hertz. Let me look her up. Charlie Hertz. Here she is. Oh, I liked this one. 
So uh, this is uh, submitted by DJab. Hi, DJab. Charlie was a ranch worker, a cowgirl, keeps to herself in a mighty shot with the rifle. After seeing this new alien threat was capable of in the news, she secretly left the ranch to join XCOM. Her small build, her courage, ability to blend in, and skills with a rifle make her a perfect candidate for XCOM's sniper and scouting program. Now, unfortunately, she is an assault here, and I didn't see that actually now, but that's all right, because even though she's an assault, DJab, um, I will have her to try and get her into the, um, test her out to be a uh, psionic. Um, or maybe she might be one of the people that goes in for um, uh, the missions with, uh, there's some, uh, there's a, some, D I'm sorry, you guys. There's some DLC, which causes people to have to go in and, and be um, spies, basically, and infiltrate. And I might choose a Charlie for that. So anyway, uh, our next squaddy here is uh, Alex. And I'm going to murder this last name. I know it. Go to so. Go to so. Let me know if I'm if I did that even remotely correctly. Um, and I couldn't put your whole name, which is Alexandre. Um, go to so. Um, this is an ex-member of the DJSE, which is basically the French equivalent of the CIA. Uh, suave, a chain smoker, <laughs> never raises his voice and has a dry humor. So um, I gave him this little hat. And all of my um, classes, the heavies, the assaults, the supports, which you don't have one yet, um, and the snipers are always dressed in the same color. Um, these assault folk are, um, let's see if I have her right, are in this kind of... Um, light blue, very light blue here. Um, snipers are always in this uh, dark blue. Assaults are always in green and uh, support are always in tan, which we will have one uh, coming up soon. And then here are rookies. And I'm not gonna read the rookie bios until you guys uh, actually make it through your first mission and get uh, to squatty status. And then I will read them as we go along. Uh, this is Chris Evans, you'll see. These are names, all names chosen from the uh, uh, name list and if you are just getting into this let's play and you want to also join up and be part of the XCOM crew under Commander Hawkins then um, there's a link in the description box below Jessica Jessica <laughs> the jessachannel.com forward slash XCOM go over there fill out the quick little form add your soldier the more interesting your backstory is the more likely you are to get chosen so this is Gonzalo or Gonzalez I couldn't fit the whole name in there Del Rio Shannon Brown, Lisa Beck, Teo, I'm not even going to, uh, tell me who the name of the person who, uh, uh, the person who chose this name, tell me how to pronounce that last name. I don't even want to give it a try because <laughs> I'll just murder it. Uh, Donna Carpenter, Dimitri Kurbanov, and we're back to Sir Brian, or Sir Sniper, uh, Sir, <laughs> we should get some royalty in here, Sir get some dukes and duchesses and whatnot um but yeah so that's it so let's look at what we have to do we have some research to do uh and i've been looking over what we have here xenobiology means that we're going to do a um autopsy on the uh sectopods the sectoids uh which are the three um uh, aliens that we ran into the four of them that we ran into and we, it will take us on to another branch of research. Or we could um, work on getting better weapons by looking at the weapon fragments. We could work on getting better armor by looking at um, the materials that we gathered from the last mission. Or we could look at what MELD is and what it's about. Now, no matter what you choose, uh, Dr. Valen will approve because she's a good, <laughs> she's a good sport. But... I really feel that my squad members are so squishy that we're going to get them some alien materials. That means they're going to get some stronger I agree. armor. That does seem to be the most pressing of our current research options. We'll begin immediately. I will notify you when a complete report is available. Thank you, Dr. Valen. Um, so, yeah, so that's basically the research here. And then it will let us know how much research, how much time we have to go before the research project is done. Now, we'll head over here to engineering. 
with Dr. Shen. I love Dr. Shen. I love his voice actor. So he's got a fantastic voice actor. And we need to build and buy some items. First of all, we need to get a med kit. I'm going to get um, three of those. Mm, no, four. The next thing we have to do absolutely right now is get a satellite. Satellites are essential to putting over to countries, uh, different countries in the XCOM project and reducing panic. So Command, let's manufacture that. Our current satellite uplink facilities are at full uh -oh. capacity. We should build additional uplinks as soon as possible to allow for new satellite deployments. Thank you, uh, Bradford. So... So I have him building that, but he is right that we do need a uh, satellite uplink in order to, to do that. And the way you do that, oops, is over here under build facilities. There's one satellite uplink here. I can build another one here. That would give us a bonus for proximity, if I'm not mistaken. I'm also excavating, but I'm pretty sure I don't have enough money to build a satellite uplink yet. And I also need 10 engineers and I have insufficient funds. So I will be uh, beginning that satellite uplink and as soon as we get back from the next mission. So once you've done everything that you need to do in base, and we have, that we don't really have enough credits to do anything more, um, we go back out here, go to mission control, and now we make time move forward by scanning for activity. Currently it is 3.15 a.m. March 1st, 2015. And we just scan until something comes up. Up, ah, here we go. So the first thing you can see over here is down the bottom left-hand side, it says excavation complete. So um, we could start building in there. We could start excavating something else, which I will. Um, but uh, let's view the abduction sites. Definitely don't want to ignore this. And I'm not sure if I ever would want to ignore it. Um, because how we do doing missions is how we get better and how we get uh, credits and all of that. So let's see what we have for abduction sites. Commander, we've picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. Thank you, Bradford. Um, so we have Russia, which is easy and gives us 200 credits. We have South Africa, which is in our home country, our home continent, I mean. That's also e easy and it gives us four science scientists. And then this one in India gives us four engineers. Because these are all easy and because the panic panic of all of these countries is at the low end here. One, two, three. You can see under panic here for all the countries. Um, I'm, then that just means that the choice is going to be based upon what the reward is. And we need engineers and we need them fast. We need 10 more engineers. So we're going to take this. We're going to confirm it. And it will take us over to the barracks where we will get to choose our squad but i'm going to um go back to briefing first before i do that and i'm going to go to engineering and build a um do some more excavation i want those excavations done as soon as possible so that'll be working uh while we are out in the field let's go back to the barracks view the soldiers and no wait no that's not right that's not right. Go back to mission control. Click on alien abductions, the mission that's up. All soldiers to the barracks immediately. We're heading to India. So we have Squatty Godaman, uh, Squatty Hertz, Squatty Godesu, or Godessa. Oh, I'm going to mess that name up. Um, but what I want to do is get rookies out. Um, so I think I'm going to, uh, it's hard. I want to take the sniper off, but if I take him off, then, um, I need to level him up so quickly to get squad sight. The assault has run and gun, which is so helpful. The Heavy has a rocket, which is also incredibly helpful. They also have, um, some of them have grenades. Since I'd like to start getting those rookies, I have one rookie on this one, so I think I'm going to take a sniper and an assault and leave the Heavy 
at home for now that will make uh, this particular uh, troop unit very upset with uh, Deidre Hawkins, but there it is. I'm gonna clear that unit and then let's add a unit. So for this one, um, Chris Evans is up next um, and I think I'll just do it right on down the list from top to bottom, basically. Um, so let's get the rookies. Uh, let's get one of these two with um, a med kit. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Load out. Frag grenade. I'm going to switch the frag grenade out for a med kit. And if you're playing this, there's a little um, symbol down here in the bottom left that you can click on and that'll give you some more information. Let's take a med kit for this. And I think that's, I don't think, I'm going to hope that we don't need any more med kits, to be honest. We're just going to have to hope that people stay alive because these grenades, actually, you know what? I'll send my rookies out with, with med kits. One of the reasons why the Wookie, Wookies, the rookies <laughs> wear white, the rookies wear white, say that several times fast, is that their armor in the base is called um, wet white, wet white, because every rookie has to wear white. That means they're more visible out in the field um, to the aliens. And if they uh, manage to survive being more visible and they do not get their butt shot, <laughs> then um, they survive to squatty and then they can move into a less bright color except for the assaults who want to be seen because of their run and gun and distracting the aliens and that's how I see them. So anyway, um, the rookies are like, oh God, I got to go put on my wet whites, meaning their white armor and see if they can make it through without wetting their pants. Let's launch this mission. That's the Sky Ranger leaving the base. Dropship has arrived. That's my Sky Ranger captain. Let's begin this assault. The area of engagement for this mission will be in India. Alien activity continues to surge within several major cities. Our response is crucial to minimizing the spread of panic. You all heard Bradford. I will be with you every step of the way. Keep your comm links open and clean. Let's keep the chatter down to a minimum. For two of you, this is your first mission. I want to see the best you can do. The best that you can do. Remember, this mission determines whether you live, you die, and you make it in XCOM. I like it. They sent the rookie out first. Strike team is touching down now. Standing by for your orders. Roger, Big Sky. Reading you so this five is... by five. Strike one has the green light for deployment. So this is a, a great map here. Um, I've not been on this one before. Uh, one of the things that people said was that they wanted to see more, um, in, in XCOM, they want to see more city maps, more. So we've actually landed on top of a um, construction site, it looks like. Okay. Let's find our soldiers. Let's see, where are we? There we are. This way. So strike one stays here throughout the entire deployment in case we need to make a fast retreat. I like to move my soldiers from the farthest soldier back and I usually split them up into teams of two and then later on when we have six squaddies we'll have three teams working the uh, different areas. Um, I consider the teams to be supporting each other. This is full cover. Nope this is all half cover. This is crap. Let's see how far to dash to, yeah, this is a bad, as far as full cover is concerned, this is not a great map. Somebody's gonna have to be in risk, even if we're dashing. We've got some full cover here with a backup. We could take two teams, one around this side, one team working around here, and one team dashing and working to there. But if I dash here, and I activate somebody over here, which is entirely possible. Um, I'll have to have somebody backing it up. 
But yeah, we're going to have rookie Chris Evans, you're up. Rookie Evans, I want you moving Roger forward. Alien object in sight. Here they come. And we activated somebody right away. They get to move to different areas here. And that gives us an idea as to where we are. We also have meld over here, which we have to get to. So I'm going to have a team working to get to that meld. That's going to be uh, this one here. Hertz. Um, I'm going to have Hertz move. Where can you go? You can. Okay. So dashing, I'm going to have Hertz move to here. And by the way, remem remember again that you are part of what I'm calling my, um, my command team. You are giving me advice. You're all advisors and you are all here to kind of help me Already there. make the best decisions on the field. That's what we're looking for. Now we have two of them. Uh, we have to get meld in five turns and meld in eight turns. He's going to go here. And you might be thinking, why am I not dealing with these two aliens over here? Well, I am. I'm about to take her. She can only dash. And I'm not going to have her dash to half, half cover. So if I can get her here, which is terrible cover, but still, it's better than nothing. She might be able to get a shot off on this one here. Um, my rookie is covering this area. Can you see anybody? My sniper, I mean. No. I was hoping my sniper might be able to kind of hit from around this corner. But that's kind of silly now that I think about it. The rookies don't like having to sit on the dead bodies here or stand on the dead bodies. But there it is. Parks, move forward. Parks, can you see anybody? No. All right. Well, I need to get you to some full cover and quick. Um, I'm going to have you, I might have you hunker down. Sniper, move forward. So, um, actually, no, I take that back. I'm going to switch the sniper to a pistol and I'm going to have him overwatch on his pistol from that direction. And Parks, I'm also going to have her overwatch. and hope that they don't aim for her. Here he comes, and that Overwatch is doing some good there. Parks gets a hit and does three damage and kills it. Oh, nicely done, Parks. And another Overwatch opportunity from our sniper. He's got a pistol, only does two damage, but he missed. And now he's coming up to, to aim at our dude. I'm under fire. Keep calm. Hurts. I need you to get to that meld ASAP, but keep in mind that there's a good chance that it's not going to be easy to get to up here. I'm sure, there's probably aliens after aliens up there. Um, four turns isn't much. How far can you go in one turn? to here. You can't overwatch. All right. Hurts, move forward. Nothing activated. I like that. Go to Mon. Move forward. You could see someone for a minute there, which means that there may be someone down here. So what I mean is that as he moved across this area, over here on the screen, um, an alien popped up for a minute, an alien head, which means that he almost activated somebody right in there, is my guess. Um, so it would be great if I could get some, hmm. Parks. Uh, 
this is all half cover, but it gives me a nice aim bonus. But... That puts me flanking. What I'm thinking is if I can take him up to this roof and to here, just here, gives him some cover, half cover at least, but he also will be flanking this alien, meaning behind his cover, and should be able to get a shot without any problem. It'll give him a nice bonus, but his cover will not be that great. He'll also be able to provide cover for these uh, this battle that's going on up here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try and get him to. It keeps sort of flipping out there as I raise my. As I come right to here. It's not letting me do it. I want to go right up here, but it's not letting me do it. This is finicky. Oh, it's saying that I can't move to this spot. Well, I can, but it would say, I'm telling me I'm flanked, which I know. Almost got it. Sorry about this, but I really want to get this person in this spot, flanked or no flanked. It's not letting me do it, as you can well see. Let me try turning the camera. I don't want to go down there. I want to go up, up. <laughs> okay, well, there, it'll have to be there because I cannot get it. I can't get it to go where I want it to go. This is gonna cause him to be flanked. Oh, we have two more, but one of them is flanked. Now, um, this is a bad situation for this guy because he is, um, I couldn't get him to move where I want him to go, but it means that he's going to be in danger of being shot at because he just got these two aliens and I might, Chris Evans might, might not make this. Just because I was trying to get a flank and the, and the, and it wouldn't allow me to move him. Um... But yeah, I'm going to take that shot and then hope that we can do something to get these other two aliens out of the way. That's a 100% chance to hit on that flank. Let's take it. There. A dead alien is much better than a um, live alien. But that means we have two aliens over here. Now, luckily, they're in a, sh a small space together. So we might be able to get a, a grenade in there, which will be to the upset of... Oh, not, not far enough. Okay. Because they're less likely to shoot him if they're dead. <laughs> it's my thinking here. And Godamon, I can't really move him, and he has only got a grenade. Um... I hate to just randomly throw grenades, but it's the only way I'm certain to at least get one of these aliens down. Because if both of them get a shot off at him, he's in so much trouble. If I do a running gun, I could come to here, take a shot, and then, and then get closer. That's what I'll do. Run and gun should allow me to move. Moving to fire position. Come here. Let's move. Let's turn this camera so I can get this move right. And it's telling me that this is going to flank me, which I know. Since I have four turns to get this, I'm wondering. Is there anywhere else that I can move that'll get me a little bit closer? If I move to here. Yes, that's only half cover, but I'm certain to take both of them out with a grenade, and then I can move back and get this in the next turn. I'm on the move. That's it. So I could, you know, hit this guy for 70, but I, I want to... Oh, shoot, I just did something stupid. 
I thought I could use my grenade, but I can't. Well, I just learned, just learned a new trick, meaning I'm dead. Or she's at least now they're, they're gonna have a hard time. Boom! Oh, I hate it. <laughs> Parks, we need you, and we need you quick. We've got two soldiers in big trouble. And I need to know if I can get you over here because there's another so another uh, alien just back in here that would really like to. And I need to I need to get a. Um, I'm not gonna be able to get you to do anything in that turn. But if I move you here. That alien's pretty likely to come out and I can um, overwatch you. Okay. I'm on it. Alright. You are still on your pistol, and I will have you overwatch as well too. Di guardia, affermativo. They're trying to flank us! Shh, careful! Oh man, that was just pure freaking luck. Pure freaking luck. All right. Hurts, I know things are looking a bit tight up there, but I need you to get this alien out of the way. You're flanked as well. Drop back to full cover. 46% chance is better than no percent chance. Do it. And mission accomplished. Whoa! <laughs> wow, we did it. <laughs> Complete with horrible mistakes on the commander's side. Horrible mistakes. Oh, that's fantastic. That should get us a couple of um a couple of of le level ups maybe. Uh, promotions. Impressive work, Commander. Our soldiers have to be feeling good after a mission like that. That I thought was going to be a whole lot worse than it ended up being. Just as I'm, I'm a new player. There's certain things I don't know. Like for example, I now know that you cannot use run and gun with a, um, with a grenade. You can't do that. So now I know. Alrighty, that was Operation Stone Summer. Um, and rookie Felicity Parks has been promoted to support. Yes, we have two new supports, has, as has uh, Chris Evans. That's wonderful. Supports are very uh, helpful. They are the ones who carry the med kits. They have a lot of different um, tools to be able to make the rest of the squad safer and or better in some way. Um, including things like uh, smoke, which they can lay down, which Commander increases the situation room. Commander to the situation room, which increases their defense. Uh, Bradford, tell him I'll be there in a moment. Felicity Parks, Chris Evans, I like these. And listen up, men. The council has let us know that there is a new medal to be awarded. I will do some thinking and decide who will receive that first honor. I saw some very good work out there, and I'm very glad that you all came back alive. We have here uh, four sect sectoid corpses, eight weapon fragments, and 20 meld. Yay! Commander um, to the situation room. Commander to the situation room. We have a new facility available, a workshop, which adds five engineers to our staff. So if we get started on a workshop, plus the four engineers we have, that should get us one engineer away from being able to get that satellite uplink, which is incredibly important. Unfortunately, in the countries that you choose not to help, and you can only choose to help one, the panic increases across the other countries. For Africa, that's not too bad, because that's our home continent. Um, for Europe, um, that is not good. So we're going to need to do something to bring that down, including possibly putting a um, satellite over a country in Europe to we help bring the panic down. Touch, Commander. Commander, Commander, you can now honor our soldiers by awarding them medals for accomplishments you deem appropriate. You can view and award medals in the barracks. 
Understood, Bradford. By the way, take lunch. The new engineers arrived this morning, Commander. We're always glad to have more help down here. As always, happy to help, Dr. Shen. So, um, for a workshop, I'm thinking... We don't have enough funds yet for a workshop. We need 130 credits. But I think I'll put it here. Um, I also would like to know about... Um, to the situation room. I better answer that quickly before it drives us crazy. But I'd also like to know about proximity, what you know about proximity, like what I need to put next to a workshop to get a proximity bonus. Let's head to the situation room before they drive us crazy. Situation room. I'm on my way. Hawk out. Every member of the council is going to want satellite coverage, so we should plan our deployments carefully. We have pending council requests, or we may have them. No council requests right now. We can launch a satellite. South Africa is a little dicey, as is Russia. Let's view our finances. The end of the month could not come soon enough. We need that 370 credits. We have some craft maintenance and facility maintenance. Nothing too out of the ordinary from what I understand. I also would like to know how many corpses, how many of the different gray market items do you keep on hand? That's another question I have. So if you could let me know in the comments below, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, and we have no pending council requests right now. I'm receiving you. We'll monitor that contact, but I don't think it's related to the UFO activity. A fun little thing is the more time you spend in base here as you're doing things, Commander Bradford will randomly talk about things he's receiving over the communications, and uh, some of them are pretty funny. So, um, okay, uh, we have a um, launch satellite here. So this is the keys to satellite deployment, and I won't read this whole thing here, but basically you want to get, uh, you deploy satellites to gain monthly funding, um, and um, monitoring, monitoring con countries on the same continent will greatly re increase the monthly rewards granted by that continent. So that's important. We really want to um, keep the credits coming in because that's how we can move forward. And, and Hawk is all about the money. We'll need interceptors deployed to continents in which we have satellite co coverage. So we'll need to be getting uh, interceptors in. But that's something we don't have to do until later. We do have um, one satellite available. We have one in orbit over ourselves, over Nigeria, our home country. Um, and we report at the moment. Boards are clear. Thank you, Brad Bradford, but I thought I told you to go take lunch. We all know that Bradford never sleeps or eats. So, um, these are the different countries here. It'll tell you how much credits you get. And I, eventually you want to have satellites over each one. Um, of course, it's very important to go for, I'm thinking going for Russia, but... Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll make that choice in the next episode. Because South Africa is already in our country. Um, we already have that been bonus. Up some odd transmissions lately. Some nut calling himself Commander Straker has been all over the news ranting about shadow operatives. I want uh, information about that, Bradford, and put it on my desk. I want to read that information in the morning. Um, so Russia gives us 110 per month, plus one satellite plus two scientists south africa would give us two engineers a month which would be very helpful but um russia has in the european kind of content i think that's united kingdom russia france germany and then this is asia down here and then australia is it's is its own it only has one um has no country then is what i'm trying to say um africa is egypt south africa and where am I? Egypt, South Africa, and Nigeria. Okay. They're all that one. Equipment should be passed on directly to the research team. Um, and then South America, Brazil, and Argentina, and Mexico, and then United States, or, or Canada and the United States for North America, I mean to say. So that's how it works. So um, actually, what I think I'll do is just go ahead and put it in Russia, because it's just a no-brainer to put it there. I, and um, so let's do that. Bradford, I confirm this satellite launch to country Russia. I want the travel time done in 10 days. The council informs me that it will give us 110 more credits per month. Alien body parts as souvenirs. It's a breach of protocol. 
<laughs> See? <laughs> and anyone caught with souvenirs on their person at nightly roll call will face my wrath. Satellite Let's launch that satellite. Facilities at maximum capacity. Additional uplink required. So now it's telling us that we need a satellite, and that's fat. But it knocked its... Um, we need to do that fast, and we it knocked its uh, panic down, though. So there you go. So that's how it works. That's XCOM for you. And I will save this one. And we'll come back and do the next mission. I'm very glad that you all survived, and I was surprised that that mission was so... I don't know. I don't. I, I'm shuddered to say the word easy because <laughs> even for normal, normal is considered easy for most players. And I, I'm I'm new, so I'm too hesitant to go up to classic and get us all killed. <laughs> but anyway, let's go out to the main menu so that I might say to you that I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please hit the thumbs up button below. And if you loved what you saw, join the party and subscribe. I hope you are enjoying XCOM Enemy Within. I hope you got your soldier in. But if you didn't, don't worry. You can still add soldiers at the jessachannel.com forward slash XCOM. As always, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Get every new Jessa Channel video right in your email inbox. Subscribe, then from your YouTube homepage, click Manage Subscriptions, then check Email with new uploads. And thanks for watching.